Well, hi, I'm Kevin Monahan with the Florida Small Business Development Network. Today, we're going to talk about how to start up your own business. It's a very exciting time when you decide to start a business. But it's really, really important to start it right. You see the statistics about how many businesses fail in their first three to five years. Those numbers are real. Mostly it's because people don't seek advice or get the experience or assess their own capabilities before they actually start a business. At the FSBDC network, we've had clients come in who have already leased space in a shopping center and don't know what kind of business they want to own. That's dangerous stuff. It's really important to get a grip on what your skill sets are, what you want to do, and have a firm idea. Why are you starting this business? Is it because you want to get out of the corporate world? You want to be your own boss? You believe that you are doing something completely different that the world is going to embrace? What about your experience? Are you going into a business that you've never done before? Many people, before they go into business, work in a similar business to get an idea how things are done, get an idea how the operation works, get an idea how management works. Experience is really important. If you haven't worked in that field before, you might have a tough time just jumping right into business. You might want to work for another company that's already established that's doing more or less the same thing. That way you can learn the operations, the methodology, the marketing, the selling, where the vendors come from, just a whole host of things that are going to make your life a lot easier later on. Another thing to think about is have you saved enough money for this? Starting a business, no matter how sharp your pencil is, can be very dangerous relative to money. You can go through a lot of money before something good happens, and you've got to have that contingency in mind. Another thing to think about is long hours. If you just recently had some kids, and you're going to be doing 12-hour days, this is something you're going to have to talk about with your spouse because that business is going to demand a lot of your time. Entrepreneurship is not a nine-to-five role. And then finally, are you a self-starter? It's not the kind of thing where a bell goes off at 8 and a bell goes off at 5, you drop your pencil and you come home. If you're working from the house, there's a tremendous number of, of distractions. The doorbell rings and it's the guy that mows the lawn. There's a show that you really like at 2 in the afternoon. Maybe you're going to take a little break. These are the things that can be real distractions from a home-based business. And even if you're going out and selling, or even if you're in retail, you have to be a self-starter. You have to put the time and effort into this to make it work. And it's hard. One of the other most important things is that you have to realize what kind of goals you're going after as an entrepreneur. You may have an income goal. You look at the family that you're supporting, or the lifestyle that you want to lead, or the type of work that you want to do. These are all things that have to be thought about ahead of time. Income goals. How much money do I need to make in this business? How much money do I need to make gross before taxes and expenses? And how much money am I going to be able to put in my pocket at the end, the net at the end of this? And then there are lifestyle goals. What kind of business do you want to be in? Do you want to be outdoors? Do you like being indoors? Do you like selling? Do you like making things? These are all really important parts of that. And type of work goals. What kind of work am I going to do? Am I going to enjoy it? You have to enjoy it. That's one of the most important things. If there's any advice I give you, be passionate about what you're doing because it's going to make you a better entrepreneur. So how do entrepreneurs come up with these ideas of what type of business to open? We've certainly found that work experience is a big one. Uh, they get experience at the, the job that they're in, find out a lot about how it works, but they start believing that they could do it better than the people that they're working with right now, or that they've got an angle on it that might improve it so they could be more competitive or really take over the niche. So that's very common. Uh, personal interests. Uh, I had recently a client that was thinking of going into business. He came to me and said, I think I want to open a business. What are you doing right now? Well, I have six karate classes a week. I teach kids karate. You're already in business. You've got to do something quick. So. Uh, uh, personal interest or hobbies, and again, these are things that you can be passionate about, but also give you a lot of experience because you've been living that hobby, you've been living that personal interest. And of course, consumer experiences, but that can be dangerous. Uh, you stayed at a bed and breakfast and you really liked it that, that weekend, and you think you could do it yourself. Beware, it's a lot harder than you think. 
Consumer experiences are a lot of fun, but take a real close look before you get it and see what's going on behind the scenes before you take that on. So there's a couple of ways to go into business. You can go from scratch, you can buy an existing business, or you can buy a franchise opportunity. Let's look at all three of these. Starting from scratch is the most affordable way for doing it, but you're going literally from scratch. It's a blank piece of paper. You have to design all the processes yourself. The business plan has to come completely from you. Uh, the operations, the, the mapping, everything comes from you. So you've really got to do your homework to be very successful starting from scratch. Many people instead buy an existing business because they feel that a lot of the processes have already been worked out. The kinks have been worked out. The business has been around for a while. There's already a customer base. There's processes and there's operations and that kind of thing. But you also have to be careful because you want to make sure that you're buying the business for the right price. And you've got to make sure that, that the owner uh, is showing you everything in the business. And what if you didn't know this, but the business had a bad reputation with the customer base? These are things you've got to think about before you do it. Many people buy a franchise opportunity. And of course, traditionally, we think of that as a McDonald's or a Burger King. But in reality, there's hundreds of, of different kinds of franchises. And when you buy a franchise, you're buying a system. This is like the complete opposite from starting from scratch. The franchise wants you to be successful. It puts together a series of books and classes that teach you exactly how to run the franchise the way they do it. And your chances of success are really, really good if you follow their step-by-step -step process. But if we look at it from a cost point of view, Starting from scratch, again, probably the lowest price going in and starting a business. Buying an existing business can vary greatly depending on the type of business that you're buying. And franchises tend to be the more expensive that because you're paying for everything being thought out. All three of them are worth consideration. So, as we talk about the idea for the business that you're going into, you want to talk about the purpose of the business and how it will make money. The idea is really, really important. You have to believe in your idea, and you have to describe it in a way that we all understand, the audiences that you talk to. The idea describes the opportunity. The business model answers the question, so what? What is the purpose of our business? What are we trying to do? What is the mission? What is the strategy for what we're doing? And that's going to incorporate everything and is your prelude to doing a business plan. Also understand that not only do you have to have a good idea, but you have to have a clear and understandable business model. The business model is how the idea makes money. They work hand in hand. A good idea that makes money is something that a banker, an investor, or maybe a rich relative is going to understand and help you make this dream come true.